about six more weeks of so general delivery. We're on the downside. And I did talk to Jerry Sowers today, and he's going to have to have more surgery in September. Mm -hmm. so. uh, do we have a prayer warrior today? Anyone? Bow your heads, please. Bless us as we meet together. Thank you for our individuality and also for our common bond. For friends, food, fun, fellowship, especially the fellowship of Kwanians, we give our sincere thanks. Help us to remember that we are here to serve, not to be served. Guide us to understand the wisdom and simplicity and remind us uh, daily of the many who need us to help. Allow us to be here for others and assist them in times of need. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay, a number of things on the agenda today. Uh, as a business meeting, we do have guests, and uh, I'd like to introduce them first. We have the president of uh, Troy Kwanis and her guest from the uh, Miami uh, family who shelter in Miami County. dropping off shoes, clothes, toys. It was crazy. But then I got this big idea, well, as president, I'm going to choose another project. And this is where I, where Miami County Youth Center comes in. They actually have purchased a, it was 
a former doctor's office in Troy, and it has lots of land, lots of space, and they're going to keep the existing building of the doctor's office, and I'll let her tell you more about that, but behind that, they're going to build a brand new facility to house domestic and homeless families. In that building, where they're at now, once children go into that building, they can't come out. There's no green space where they're at now. There's no fencing. There's no protection once they go in. So once they go in, they can't. They don't typically go outside and play and run and be a kid. And on top of that, there's no space. So they don't have the space to do their homework, read books, you know, study, do all the things that kids need to do. So that's when I went to the abuse center and I said, hey, Qantas and Troy, hopefully with the help of other Qantas, we're looking for a big project to get engaged with, to do some extra fundraising, to put all those funds toward this project. So we actually are from Troy Kiwanis, we are donating, I know, at least $20,000 to the project. And while that's going to get us started with a brand new industrial playground because the new facility is actually going to have a fenced-in <coughs> space for the kids. They can go outside and play, they can swing, they can run. Um, there will be a shelter out there where the moms or the families can sit and watch their kids play and know that they're going to be safe. And then in addition to that, there's going to be a study playroom. In the study room, we are um, getting three computers put in there with printers and um, desks, chairs, pencils, paper, whatever they may need, especially during the school year, to keep them on task. You know, um, these kids don't choose to be in this situation. It, it, it just, and truly, I can't even explain to you if you could just see what I saw. It just, it's just heartbreaking. So, what we're doing is, on top of the twenty thousand, we're hoping to raise twenty thousand more to help finish off the cost of putting all of this in. And if we have any extra money, if we go beyond that, we're going to continue to contribute to these kids in this facility, whatever we can do. If they need, um, you know, shampoos, whatever, whatever we can do. That's, I mean, it, everything that we make from these fundraisers <coughs> specifically for this will be directed specifically to that. So um, at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Debbie. Um, she works for the Miami County Abuse Shelter. She's going to show you the new expansions and what's going on. And then I'll talk a little bit more about the fundraiser part that we're doing. Okay. So, Ms. Debbie. Thank you. For those of you that don't know me, um, my name is Debbie Robart, and I do work at the Family Abuse Shelter. I've been there about almost two years. Um, I was in banking. And like Carrie, I did Troy Leadership, where you have to get on a board, and I got on the board for the Family Abuse Shelter. And I just wanted to get more involved, and the director came to me and said there was a position open as a domestic violence victim advocate. So that's what I do, and I work strictly with <coughs> domestic violence victims in the courthouse, um, and also with the victims that we have at the shelter. So I'm going to go through this PowerPoint real quick. Um, how many of you are familiar with the shelter at all? shelter we have a shelter 24 7 it is staffed 24 7 so if somebody is in crisis a lot of times the police will come with somebody that's fleeing domestic violence and this could be in the middle of the night this could be early in the morning any hour of the day and night we do have staff there the Buckeye house is our men's shelter and that is on Market Street 
that's going to stay there. We are strictly trying to do a new shelter for the women and children, which is called the Franklin House. We also have permanent supportive housing for eight disabled homeless people. Um, it's an apartment complex not a, attached to the shelter. And we work with the individuals in there. We have the legal advocacy, which is court accompaniment and protection orders, which is what I do and another lady works with me on that. We have rapid rehousing. So when we have somebody come into the shelter that is homeless or fleeing domestic violence, we will help them with their deposit and first month rent. We will help them get a job, help them get all the benefits, food stamps, all of that to get them on their feet. For 2018, and I'm not going to read through all of this because there's a lot here, I think the main thing is last year we provided 10,349 units of emergency shelter, which is individual people came through our shelter for the year. We had um, 725 victims of domestic violence we served. And just so everybody knows, I'm from Piqua, and when I started working here, I was amazed because probably 70% of the people I deal with are coming from Piqua. That's say, but it's true. Um, we help with protection orders, which 149 got protection orders. And 92% uh, of the victims that we served reported increased feelings of safety. We also gave out $151,000 in rental assistance. We are funded from grants, donations, United Way. So that's where our money comes from. Okay, why are we relocating? First of all, we need more space. The picture on the top left, where the bunk beds are, we have three bedrooms, and that's where all the women and children stay. We only have 22 beds and three cribs within these three rooms. We are full all the time. We have to prioritize who can come in and who can't. We keep it to Miami County residents, unless somebody from another county is fleeing from someone, and then we will house them, like we will send people that need to get out of Miami County to another county so we can reciprocate. But with those three bedrooms and the 22 beds, we have one bathroom upstairs for all those people. We have on the far right is our kitchen, and it only seats eight. So when the shelter is full, we have to do all of our meals and shifts, which is hard when there's children. I mean, there was just a mom with six kids, and we had a mom with five kids. So as you can imagine, you know, we're telling one family they can eat this time, the other family another time. It gets pretty chaotic. The bottom picture there is the back of our shelter. We have a little porch, and then this is just, it used to be like a parking lot, but this is the only area we have for the children to play. If somebody is fleeing domestic violence, their abuser, this is right on the street, they can drive right by and see the kids, so they obviously know where the parent is. So therefore, the kids have to stay in the shelter because there is no place for them to go that is hidden. We also are seeing a lot of older people. Um, this past year, we had 15 in shelter that were above the age of 62 and 25 for legal advocacy. Just this year, I've had seven um, people that were in their 70s and 80s, some of them with walkers, some of them with canes. All of the um, living quarters are on the second floor. The first floor is all offices. So this makes it really hard for somebody with a walker or a cane because that's 22 steps. They can't get up there. So we are seeing, like I said, a lot of older people come through the shelter. So the one we are gonna build is all on one level. <clears throat> we also need to separate the homeless from the domestic violence victims. They have a lot of different needs. They need their space. According to our grants for the homeless, we have about 30 days to get them situated, get them benefits, get them housing, and get them out. Domestic violence, we don't have to hurry them along as much. So to keep them separate, 
if, if you're fleeing domestic violence and you've been abused, you kind of need your space. And right now, there's no quiet space whatsoever in the shelter. If we, or when we get to build, when we get this finished, we will have extra rooms for the staff to meet with clients privately. Right now, if anybody comes in, we have to go in the kitchen. And if there's a meal going on, that presents another problem because there's no private space to meet. My office is on the third floor, which is 22 more steps, and I cannot take most of my clients up there. So I've been out on the patio. I mean, it's just, we, are, we have no space. So there's no confidentiality because you're in somebody else's office. We also, with the uh, new rooms in there, if um, like children's services needs to come, right now we are transporting all of our clients to the different resources where now we will have two extra rooms so if like um, children's services wants to meet with a client, we'll have a room where they can come in and use it. Also, our building is not energy efficient. It is a very, very old house. Um, as of yesterday, the air conditioning went out. So it's, <laughs> it needs updated. Plus, a lot of people have asked to volunteer and we have no room to put a volunteer. We could use people in the kitchen, we could use people answering phones, but if they answer phone, they're going to take somebody away from their desk, and that's not possible too. So we will have room for volunteers, which will be nice. So we are conducting a capital campaign in order to relocate and expand. So far, we found a property that, like Carrie had mentioned, um, in Troy, it is there's a lot of space there. So down the road, if we needed to grow, we've got plenty of room and there's plenty of green space. We also picked a property that we could afford. We have already paid off the existing building that we have. We got an architect, we got the budget, we got all the surveying done. The total project is 2.3 million. And right now we have raised 1.2 million. This is a picture of the existing doctor's office that we have purchased and paid for. Um, and basically, I went through it. What they told us is the walls were not permanent, so we're just gonna go knock the walls down, get rid of the um, orange carpet, get rid of the dark paneling, and put up some walls. It won't be anything glorious and fancy, but it will be offices for the director, the treasurer, the advocates, the caseworkers. This is the uh, sketch of the new building. And the green right here, that is the existing building that we already have. This is just like a little um, office space and training room. So if somebody wants to come in, say Children's Services needs to come in and talk to several people, that's a big enough room for that. The blue up there will be domestic violence and the red salmon color, whatever, that will be for the homeless. The yellow on the far end is the kitchen, and this is like a family room area. This is the playground right here that Carrie was speaking of, where um, Juanis is going to help us, which is wonderful. This is a little indoor area here, courtyard, with some seating. You know, probably we may put like some little types of furniture, so the mother that comes in, which is very frequent with toddlers, is a safe place that is inside, but yet it'll be outside. It's like an outdoor courtyard, but it's inside, so it's all fenced in and safe. We do have, because I'm in Pickle, most of you know, um, Cheryl Stifle Francis that passed away. Before she passed away, she agreed to give us some money. So this room up here is going to be called Cheryl's room, and that will just be a quiet room. I would imagine for the older people, because they doubt the kids in the quiet room, but maybe so. Because also the room that um, Carrie had mentioned with the desks and everything, I think it's up here or here, I'm not sure, one of these areas. Where your thumb is. Oh, down here, okay, yep. So, does anybody have any questions about that? Yes? Where's the building located? It is on Crescent Drive. Where is 
used to know where Crescent Drive is. Do you know where the the old hospital in Troy used to be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the old Stouter Hospital. The old Stouter Hospital. It's just up that hill a little right. bit and to the right. Yeah, in my mind, I thought I don't know where it is. Mm -hmm. So here's the timeline. We um, got the design completed in May. We have not yet selected a contractor though. We have five contractors that are interested in building. They're going, we're going out for bids. The actual construction will begin October. It's not gonna be September, unfortunately. And construction probably won't be completed then until September. So we're a little behind time, but it's gonna get done. <laughs> So, so far we purchased the Crescent Street property. We replaced half of the roof, I guess, because the other half is fine. I don't quite understand that, but that's what I've been told, uh, which is funding from Ohio Attorney General's office. There was a grant from the Ohio Attorney General's office that we needed to spend right now. So we bought appliances, office furniture, we've got that all stored. We did sign a contract with the architect, Patrick Hansford, and we do have the 1.2 committed to the project. So far, we have uh, mailed out brochures. We've secured giving levels on our website. You can do donations through PayPal. The donors, I think it's 10,000 or more, will be recognized on the board in the shelter. And then there will be a celebration when the um, shelter is completed. That's a picture of some of our clients here that have come through the shelter. And then here at the end is Barbara Holman is the director and Ruth Jenkins, some of you may know, she is the committee chairperson. Barb is the daughter of Barbell Atkins and she's the one that founded the shelter. So that is the director. If you look on the back of that brochure, there is a picture of a lady and she gave us permission to put it on there. She came to us um, and She's only 60 years old, which <laughs> to me that's pretty young. Um, but she looks a lot older than that. She had rheumatoid arthritis really bad, had trouble getting around, um, sleeping on a mattress, husband was abusive. She just needed a lot of help. Well, we got her the services, we got her an apartment, I took her in for a complete makeover. We got her glasses, hearing aids. Uh, even the dental clinic in Troy wanted to give her dentures, but she said she's been without teeth so long that she was used to it, so she didn't want dentures. But when she moved out, she was so happy because she was finally on her own. She didn't have to answer to somebody that was abusing her. And just, you know, she had the benefits. And it just, I don't know, helping people like that every day makes me feel really good. And we have a lot of people that come in that are really, they come in with a backpack on their back, and that's it. So they need everything. So when we move people into apartments, I mean, it's like if you were moving into a house, you need everything. So donations are always appreciated because, you know, we move somebody out today, we got to get dishes and silverware and beddings and linens <coughs> and the whole bit. And for gentlemen, a lot of ladies clean out their closets. We get ladies' clothing in like crazy. We very rarely get the men's clothing. So if all of you are cleaning out your closet someday, <laughs> drop them off at the shelter, um, either the men's shelter or the women's. If you drop it off at the women's, we can get it over to the men's. It's not a problem. The doors are always locked, but just ring the bell and somebody's there and we'll answer it. Does that drop off the, which, where's that at, looking it up? The men's shelter? The, either. Oh, drop. the men's shelter is on Market Street. It's just right down the street from the post office. And the women's shelter is on Franklin Street. It's, um, okay. I guess the best way to say it is right around the corner from the Caroline, or the square, yeah. Square. It's not where you drop like toys or? We don't take don't toys. Take toys. <sighs> well, and I hate to say it, but you know, when there comes bed bugs and all that kind of stuff, we gotta put a limit where if it's clothing, we can put it through the washer, right. the dryer, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, no, we don't take toys, sorry. I mean, we have so many kids in there, it would be nice, but we just can't. <coughs> yes? 
Um, I work the Y, and we right. get phone calls actually two weeks ago. I had two in the same week of ladies that were in abusive situations, and I preferred them to you. But do you can you pick them up if they're in another if they're in Pickle? How do they get to you if they don't have transportation? A lot of times, police will drop them off at the door, and I think we preferred them. Yeah, the other advocate and myself, every morning we go to court to the arraignments and get the police reports for all the domestic violence um, charges that happened the night before. And then we call the victim, send them a letter, and work with them and tell them about the pretrial and the you know, protection orders and help them through the court system. And then half the time, you know, lead them down the street to an attorney for a divorce. Okay. But uh, yeah, it's, it's so it's enjoy. I enjoy the work. Put it that way. Yes. Um, several years ago, I retired from the American Red Cross. I was their emergency services director, and I worked closely with Mobile mm -hmm. and Youth Shelter. Um, more importantly, this past one year, I made Project Linus blankets, these blankets, and that was when I delivered several to the shelter, and we were filled up because oh, yeah. the children were there, and so I just told them to distribute the blankets to whoever children mm -hmm. got blankets. I'm sure some adults have too. So. That's really nice because the kids, I mean, they can only come in with the fake six, lace six outfits. That's all we let them bring. There's no room, there's no closets, there's no room to put anything. So when the kids come in, it's really nice to be able to say, here, this is for you. This is special. Instead of just, you know, take the clothes on your back, let's go, we're moving to an apartment because they don't have toys, they don't have all that stuff for them. David, question. Do you ever have men? Who come in with children? They come with with children or not? You know what? I've been here almost two years, and I can I can't think of okay. one. I was just we have no men with domestic violence. I mean, men do come to us, not many, but we do help them. But I don't know of any. Now, sometimes a man will. Like if he has like an 18 year old son or something okay. like that, that child will usually go stay with a friend. Uh -huh. He won't come into shelter. But no. no. Okay. I mean, if he had kids, we could put him in the men's shelter. But I don't know about little girls down there. Not, that's, yeah, we yeah. haven't had, had to work with that. Yes? One of the things you can use is paper towels and toilet paper and all cleaning materials. Oh, yes. Uh, oh. I know our church just sponsored that last month. And we brought stuff down, but I live in Troy, and uh, we bring stuff down periodically. Yes, because we have a chore list, and all of the clients that are there, I mean, some have to clean the bathroom, some have to clean the kitchen, some have to mop the floors. So, you know, cleaning supplies, especially with all the new faces coming in and out, and children coming in and out, there's cleaning going on all the time, so we can always use cleaning supplies. Yeah, especially toilet paper and paper towels. Any other questions? Yes. This building that you're building, I, I'm confused. Is it replacing the Franklin House? Or what is it? And the, the ladies and the men's house? Where does that new building fit into that big picture? Okay, the shelter that is on Market Street, which is called the Buckeye House, that is the men's shelter. That's going to stay where it is, still with men. The building that we are building is going to replace the Franklin House for women and children. Um, I'm sure we're probably going to sell it because we're not going to keep two shelters, but the director hasn't said yes we are, so I'm not sure what we're doing with it, but we're not going to run two. We're going to have everybody under one roof on one floor. What's the budget for the annual budget for the operations? That I don't know. <laughs> I can find out for you. I can find out for you. Yes. Right, right. I do know that, you know, the director does not want to take off more than we can chew. And like I said, the building that we purchased already, we paid off. Um, and so we are trying to raise almost the whole thing because we don't want to take that alone. Any other questions? Is Marvell still alive? No, no, she's, she's not. Dead. No. No. Her daughter runs it. Yes. Do you uh, service uh, homeless veterans? Yes. Yes. In fact, we have a veteran that works at the men's shelter. So he is always trying to get them in there and help them out. 
Do you know how many there are in our county? I do not know in the county. I do not know. Sorry. So what happens if you have, say, a child from Pequot there and now that's for school, do they get bused or something? Pequot City Schools up? brings the bus every morning, I picks see. up the Pequot kids, <clears throat> brings them back here. That way they don't have to change schools, which I am thrilled about. Right. They need some that makes sense. structure and normalcy in their life, so don't, yeah. I mean, oh, okay. same with Troy. I mean, they'll stay in Troy, but uh, West Milton, Piqua, yes, the school buses come. Oh, okay. Yep. Yes. Do you have many referrals from hospital emergency rooms? We have some, not a lot. Um, normally, when there's an issue, the police are at the shelter dropping them off first, and then we will end up getting them to the, we'll call the squad and, take, and have them come. But as far as the hospital calling us, no. no. I mean, we end up calling the hospital and, like I said, calling the squad and taking them there. But as far as the hospital calling us, no. Now, they release, if they have somebody that's homeless and they're going to release them, they'll call us and say, hey, this person's coming to you. Because they have <coughs> to go. Any other questions? Thank you very much. It's <laughs> years and every day I go to work I, I've never said to myself oh I have to go to work today I mean I really enjoy doing it and there is a need and we are like I said we are always full I forgot to mention in the new shelter there will be 40 beds where now we have 22 so that would be the difference okay. so real quick um, and then I'll let you guys get back to your meeting um, there's some information that I left for you guys if you guys um, need any more, let me know. I wasn't sure how much to bring or how involved or not involved you wanted to be, but um, there's a postcard. We are hosting a gala on November 2nd. All the proceeds are going to go into the funds to help with um, the purchases we're going to make um, for the abuse center. Um, we did do a big mailing to anybody who is a chamber member through Pick One Troy to those businesses requesting um, sponsorship and donations. So on the front page, it just kind of tells what's going on. The second page is the different levels of um, sponsorship that you can do. Um, there's postcards that talk about what's going on. If you want to pass them out, leave them at your business, whatever. If you know of a business that would be interested in sponsoring please don't hesitate to have them reach out to us um, but again we're, we're hosting this gala it's on November 2nd it's a hundred dollars a couple sixty dollars for an individual and all the proceeds will go back to this project um, I'm not sure what else does anybody have any questions as far as the Kwanians involvement in it and if anybody would like to be involved helping and setting up and helping and um, raising the monies and, and selling tickets and whatever, we welcome you to come. We can let you know. We can let Mark know and he can, or Joe, and let you guys know when we're meeting again. And if you want to come and <coughs> check it out and see what we've got going on, you're more than welcome to do that too. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Sure. Thanks. Thanks. All right. A few things on the agenda. We'll kind of cruise through these because I don't want everybody to be real late. We do have my board meetings. So. Prof. Shane, and he wanted two things he made to well, one big thing you want to deal with today was uh, retirement of two badges. I don't know if we can do that in board meetings. What is your procedure? Anybody know? I just think it's information that we need to do it for Connie Boer and Brian Phillips. Yeah. Okay. And he was running Joe Tomo. I didn't hear your question again. Is there a procedure for retirement badges? Is there a procedure to retire badges, or we just move straight to the? I make a motion we retire three badges. Honey board, Joe Thomas. Second. 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 Second.
Oh. Well, they're already. My dad is also retired, but I got his badge. So. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. We went through that. And then I wanted to address the farmers market. It's my fault, but our third Thursday was actually last week, and I didn't bring it up last week. So I'm sure we could probably do it tomorrow if anybody would be interested in volunteering for that. I want to be able to do it. We have the brochures and the water bottles to give away right there bank right in front of the farmer's market. If anybody has the time to do that. How's that been received, Joe? You know? Well, you know, we only, the first day that we did it, got rained out. The second day that we did it, Mark and I were the only ones there, and at 5 o'clock we got rained out. They actually shut it down that day. So, you know, we gave toy bottles. Mark made a good contact with somebody that works at Evenflow, and we were talking about some of the things we do now, one of the things with Kiwanis is the child seed program, and she asked if we got those for free, and Mark said no, and she said, well, I have to work where we might go make that happen. So, if anything else, that kind of one contact probably uh, is really important. All right, and then... Uh, So today we're actually going to vote we on whether or not there's an interest in uh, moving our family. You know, last year we moved to here. Um, uh, we voted on that, but some people aren't happy here, so it doesn't hurt to vote on it. We're not voting on moving to anywhere specific. This vote will be if there's enough interest in people moving, we'll form a committee that will find new. This is it. The yes or no doesn't mean that tomorrow we go back to the church. This is that we form a committee for someone or a committee to find a couple, you know, narrow the list down and we'll vote on if we want to move somewhere. This is just a vote to form it, whether or not we want to form a committee. It doesn't hurt to do this annually, honestly, <coughs> but it does sound like there's enough interest in that that we should really vote on it. So we got the House committee to, to looks at the agenda, the venues. So the House Committee could do that? Okay, yeah. so that's fine. So we've been doing that, uh, Joe, uh, off and on. And, uh, I think the, the issue that we've had has been uh, people have folded flight from Memphis. I started as a client 25 some odd years ago. We were at the YWCA. Well, then we we faced with, they had our minimum so high we couldn't beat it. I went to Terry's, and they went out of business. Then to the Eagles, and they folded the tent. Then from there, we went to our classroom and a learning place, eventually over to the backyard bistro, uh, and none of these places, and then to the church. None of the places were perfect. We all seemed to be using the bistro as sort of the standard, as the measuring uh, reference, and it had a, the, the uh, acoustics in there were horrible until uh, Tony Sherry brought in a portable PA system, and I know there were other issues uh, at the bistro, and the only place we've really had stability has been uh, where we were when we came here. Uh, yeah, but we voted to, to leave there, too. Yes, and that was a bad mistake. And we voted, the vote was made, or the decision was made to, to leave there. Okay, so again, we're voting to see if the House Committee needs to find a new venue. Is that fair? Yeah. Then I assume that they came up with a recommendation for a new venue that would be the longest away. Just like we did last year. That's, that's exactly right. And once that... And, and there needs to be guidelines. If we vote yes, we need to search for a new venue, there need to be guidelines for that. You know, obviously in Piqua, we're relatively close to Piqua. You know, we came here for a number of reasons. One is audiovisual. Uh, but, but let's see if there's enough interest to even go that far. Are there concerns coming from those that aren't attending yet? No, and that was one of the, and I kind of made this decision on my own without anybody else's input, but the vote last year, people voted that never come. 
Yeah. Yes. The majority of the people here are the people that come every week, and that's who's going to vote. Is that fair? That's yes. fair. Okay. Yes. The, the, all the hawk that wants to come here are the no shows. Right. But part of the problem, too, of them not coming, like I can't come, because for me to come to a Kiwanis meeting, I work across town. Yeah. I work literally as far away as I could from town. For me to come to this meeting takes approximately two hours out of my day. I can't do that every week because I love Kiwanis, I help, I do everything. However, you don't pay my bills. Yeah. So that is sort of not fair to limit it to just this group if you want to grow. Well, okay, that's fair too, but I mean, the, there's a fight on every side. There is, I agree. So, I agree. <clears throat> But this year, we're, we're going to try to do something different. You know, we tried last year, I know when I started, there were Wednesday night meetings. And I even went to one of those, and there were a couple of people there, and there were same people I saw during the day. Yeah. It's, the, uh -huh. I think the Wednesday night meet, meetings started to become more social. Right. Mm -hmm. And the thought of me just sitting there eating dinner with you versus doing everything you I have to do at home. Us. Not that I don't want to have dinner with you, but I'm busy. <laughs> so if we're not going to have a meeting and we're not going to talk about anything, then I'm not going to come yeah. when I can be doing things. Well, and I know that sounds horrible, but I feel like that's a lot of people's attitude. It sounds harsh, but Sorry, you don't do that. It, it's not meant to be harsh. Was the reason we moved from the backward backyard of being to because we had to pay rent? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. We could, no, they were talking about thirty. It was thirty dollars a meeting, and now that there's a uh, group in there that runs it, they um, they ch they we have to have a minimum of twenty four meals paid. Well, when we were you're talking about the bistro. Bistro now, yeah. Well, the bistro now, but when we were there. I don't think we paid anything more. No, no, not, no that's what... But, and now, it's a whole different setup there in that Rovers has that bistro. Right. The everything else there is uh, uh, separate. There's a learning point. So we can talk about this for yeah. an hour. Yes. Yeah. We need to just vote on whether or not we're going to cross this bridge this year. And we can do this again next year. There's nothing wrong with it. Do you think? What's the wife thing? They don't want to vote. They don't want to vote. Everybody gets a vote? Warren, do you want to vote? No, I think you're all good. My fear is that the house can move on. Hold it in half for me, would you? Hold it in half for me. I think we've been able to get really good speakers.
call it a Halloween festival, not a fall festival. So they wouldn't let us do it in, in before the festival began. They wouldn't give us a time because they wanted to meet one more time as a committee and then allow us to come in and meet. Well, they only are meeting like once a month. I have to turn all the permits in for street closures 90 days in advance. Wow. We are already past that. The city knew I had been talking with them. Brittany Van Horn, who handles all of it, happens to also be on that fall festival committee. So she was working with us. She knew what was going on. But Kelly and I ended up just having to, to make a decision because we've got to turn everything in. So for this year, we're going to stick with our Wednesday. Okay. Um, the locations will change because there isn't downtown trick-or-treat anymore. The street closures, they don't need to shut down the entire downtown. So the city has agreed to let us use their podium, let us use their PA system, all of that again. Um, I just met with Brittany last week. What we suggest, what we're doing, because the street closure permits are in, is you will meet and end at the same location this year, which is going to be really nice. That means we have a microphone at the beginning and end, which is going to be huge. So we are going to meet at the Fort Piqua Plaza, the old Mulligan's parking lot, and the new Lock Tenders parking lot, whatever that area is you want to call it, we're going to end and begin there. So we will meet there, walk past the library, past like Mutual Federal, turn and come past Fifth Third and um, Unity. Kind of you're going to go around the gazebo and then end up right back. So the little kids don't have near the walk that they used to have. We're containing everybody right there. We're literally only closing down the streets. Uh, Ash, is that what, what street are you? High Street. High Street, and then that little like parking lot, and a tiny section of Main Street. So the city loves us, <laughs> because we just made their life a lot easier. And I think it'll feel like more of a parade. It won't be so spread out. So you won't have spaces where the kids are walking where there's literally nobody watching them. Like Everybody should kind of be together. Um, that also, we're hoping will help with judging, which is why I couldn't tell you if we needed volunteers or anything yet. We are going to try to have, to do it a little different this year. And since we will have a PA right there at the beginning of the parade, sort of like the Christmas parades are done, where the kids are announced, we would like to try to do that. So as the scariest category comes through, we want them to stop at a judge's table, where there's a couple judges right there, and they get judged as they're in the parade. That way you're seeing them in their full costumes. You're not missing people. Um, the crowd's seeing them in their full costume. Judging can happen right there. We don't have a lot of volunteers that come that night. We're scrounging for people. I have my family help, my friends help. I can't get the volunteers to hold signs and judge and do everything. So this helps. This takes me down to only needing one or two people to judge, not yep. eight. Mm -hmm. And I think it'll, it'll allow, you can, we can have an MC type thing. Where you don't have the staging area for everybody? Same place as it was left, where we ended last year. So that parking lot. The, it's the old Mulligan's parking lot. Right, but that's not going to be, is that going to be enough room to put all the kid, 300 kids? We did last year. They were crammed in there last year. They were crammed in there last year. They got in there. Well, last year we were down at the... Uh, not at the end. You're that's right, where. right. I'm talking about the staging area where you go start the kids off. I mean, because we used to have them, you know, across the parking we, lot. We can use there, that and, whole parking, or whole sidewalk area all the way um, down. And Lorna will help us with the downtown area. So we won't have to meet and we can have them in the parking lot and down the sidewalk. Okay. Of Main Street without having to close anything. And that whole, the, the parking lot kind of goes behind, or the sidewalk goes behind that parking lot. Mm -hmm. We can utilize that <laughs> whole loop too. Okay. Yeah, the, they can put up, they said they would shut down the sidewalk for us if we needed to, and that that's a lot easier than shutting down a street. Yeah, the lock tenders will be open by Lock tenders yeah. will be open. I've also talked to um, Sarah, who's going to manage that. She is 100% on board to help us. She's very familiar with Troy and helping with Troy events, but not in Piqua because she's never been in Piqua before. So she's, she's awesome. way more than willing yep. to help us with anything. Um, so that's kind of our plan. That's what we put the permits in for, is that um, uh, street closure. She realizes we do this event every year. She's not going to hold us to anything. If game time comes and we need to tweak it a bit, she's fine with it. They don't care about doing that as long as we let them know like a week in advance. 
that the police have to kind of move a little bit. But they were overjoyed to have us stay together. They don't like those little kids out on the street like that. Yeah. It scares them. And, and I agree. It scares them to have the more street closures like that. Because our three and under category is what kills us. We encourage little ones. Which we want. So, so she was very happy. Is a close part of Main Street? A tiny little bit of Main Street. Oh, nice. It's, yeah. I mean, it's really little. So just that, that half block. One, just that tiny little half block. Other, both, both sides of the road are going to be closed? Correct. And then also, but not until like 6 o'clock. But on Wayne Street, they'll close that same block? Yeah. 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 That's nice. Yeah, it'll be little. And so the last things that I have to do, I'm waiting on, I requested our insurance certificate from Kiwanis. I'm waiting on that to come in, so I haven't turned that into the city yet. And then I also have to get a letter out to all the businesses notifying them of the closures, which we haven't done that yet either. Because we needed to finalize the route. We didn't want to tell all those down Main Street pick up if we didn't need to. When I get that letter, I'll sign the grievance with the city. You're not, this is your letter. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Here's your letter. No, we have to actually hand out the letter to everybody. Just to let no, but the nice thing too is they won't start closing the streets until like 6 o'clock. So it won't affect, it'll affect the library the most. But most people, you know, kind of park and walk into there anyways. So he called the builders to help too. Yeah, with the signs. Yeah. That helps, but it's the judging that killed us. Do you want to pass that candy or not? And you don't know that. Because our kids usually pass that candy. We can still. Because we donate Tootsie Rolls or whatever we want. We do. That was the other thing Kelly and I were talking about. So we pass out candy for a parade with children in it with adults watching. So maybe you don't. So maybe we don't mess with the candy. Why not? That's why kids do Halloween. The kids, yeah, but the kids are all in the parade. They don't get the candy. That's a lot. It's the people watching. So it's the adults on the side watching. Because they're in, see what I'm saying? Now, we still, we still give them candy. We still give them, everybody that enters gets a full-size candy bar. We get excited about full-size candy bars. That, well, let um, us know what you want. Yeah, so we're still, it, we're open to suggestions. Those are the things that, she doesn't care. They don't have to be on the permits. That can be, but What's can, the date again? October 23rd. And that's completely separate from the, Completely different day. Completely different day. They're, they're festivals on a Saturday. Okay. Now, hopefully, next year, in 2020, we can work together because I think it benefits us to work together. I think it's going to make our parade more attended, and I think it's going to make our festival more attended. And they agree. We just didn't have enough time. They couldn't decide on a time. And you have to put a time on there. And it's got to be turned in 90 days in advance. And they don't have their festival they haven't bought that far yet. They have they have their time frame in the street closures, but they don't have events at certain times. Like they, Main Street pick up. So Lorna wanted to help us. And if I would have pushed, Brittany would have allowed us to be very vague about it. I don't like waiting till the last minute. I don't like not preparing and knowing, nor does Kelly. So she was killing us by not giving like, not, you know not giving us time, so we decided to walk away from it this year for our own sanity and to make sure we were prepared. I didn't want us to last minute be doing stuff and have the parade look like it was thrown together last minute. Uh, we didn't want to do that. Right. So as we get closer, I'll need help save the date, October 23rd, 6 to 7.30-ish. Yeah, Probably if, not quite that long. If you have a meeting where you want volunteers to show up to in the afternoon or something, just make sure everybody Because there's not a lot that has to be done. Most of it's done well in advance. And then the night of, it's literally people helping. If there's not much of a setup, the city does it for us. I mean, it's not a huge, it's, we need sign holders and adults there to help kind of wrangle people in and say, you go, you go. That's all, that's about all. It's not hard. It's, and the kids are cute, most of them. Um, yeah, we'll probably blow. Yeah, it can still drive there. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's still streets. So, the Kiwani of the year? Yeah. All right. Um, we may not have the marching band this year. We may lose them. Uh, on our kind of our choice because it's a congested area. I think you put them in the center and just have them play one. Well, and they play right after in the Pepper Valley. Yeah, but so yeah. they don't play Troy until the following week. Not oh, it's a different week now? Yeah. Oh. So they're, they're probably so they won't be there. 
Oh, uh, Brittany doesn't even. Uh, Brittany uh, doesn't even know that because she's planning it all the same night. I just looked at uh, uh, the sports schedule. Huh? Uh, I did. I just met with her, and she was planning it being the same. It's the next. It's the, the next. next. Look. All right, we're running long and people are getting antsy. That's right. We have a count? Yes. Um, there is six, six yeses and... Meaning what? Yes form. Yes form a committee. Yes, I would like to change venues for Wednesday meetings. And then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight saying no. I would lock. I would not like to change venues for Wednesday. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's see. Go on. seven. Yes. Eight. eight. No. Eight. Eight. No. Seven. Eight. Yes. Eight. Six. Eight. Six. Eight. Six. Eight. 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 So the answer is We're staying. Six. no. But again, this is something we could do annually. I don't think it's a bad idea. All right. So for. All right, so that is uh, that is it.